Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to the Knit Witch podcast. I am your host, the Knit Witch, and oh my gosh, it has been two weeks since I recorded last. I usually record every week, but last week was just a little busy, so I didn't get the chance to record. Um, I'm saying that because I feel very out of practice with, you know, sitting in front of the camera. Um, so just bear with me this episode if I'm a little scatterbrained or I'm not like as on as I usually am. I have just been, like I said, <laughs> so busy. So finally sitting down and recording this podcast. Today is January 31st, so we can totally do a little bit of a January roundup. If that I was about to say if that's something that interests you, but I have to decide now if I'm going to do it or not, so I don't know why I'm asking you, like we're having a conversation, like I said, out of practice. So I think we should just jump right into the podcast. Maybe I'll, you know, pick it back up as I go. That's, fingers crossed for that one. Okay, so like I said, I have been very busy and in that regard, I have no finished objects to show you. I only have whips today. Well, whips and half finished objects. I finished two socks, but they're for different pairs. So whips and half finished objects. Let's just, like I said, whew, we're gonna just start. I'm going to show you something you have seen before, but you might not recognize it because I have just, I've just made so much progress on it. Um, this is my cloud watching sweater, which is a pattern by Suzanne Summer, and I'm throwing my balls of yarn everywhere as I try to hold it up to show you guys. It uses uh, yarn held with mohair, so it's a little bit, the mohair's a little clingy and the ball just spider webs itself into your project. <clears throat> so, oh my gosh. Last time I showed this to you, I don't, maybe we can do like a little spot the difference. Do you see that? I have a whole sleeve done. I actually just cast this off this morning and it uses a tubular bind off, which, oh my gosh, slap me on the wrist. I've never done that before. Um, I've been knitting since I was eight and I've never done a tubular bind off, but I did my first ever tubular bind off and what's there to say? It's basically just drafting, but not together. <laughs> Great explanation, Katie. So I have been talking about this, or last time that I talked about this, I was saying that I have a feeling that like I'm gonna have to do crop sleeves, I feel like I'm gonna run out of yarn. And so as I was knitting on the body, which I don't know how much progress I've really made on the body. I, I know, I remember, I usually show you the underarm. So that's maybe about, about a foot, and I think I had maybe nine or 10 inches last time. So I've really only done a couple inches on the body, um, and I paused on that because I was really worried that once I finished the body, I wouldn't have enough left to do like two full sleeves. So I was like, okay, let me pause, let me pull out how much yarn I think I'm gonna need for the sleeves, and just stop there and, you know, do a sleeve and see how much it takes. So I pulled out, I, I don't know, the grammage. <laughs> I'm using, uh, oh my gosh, mohair fuzz. I'm using yarn from a frogged sweater, so it's in all of these like little balls that are probably, I don't know, like 40 grams or so. So I pulled out like three little balls because that's what I thought I would need for the sleeve. Um, and I only ended up needing two of them, which is excellent news. <laughs> I allocated six for the sleeves and I'm only gonna need four. So I have two extra little guys to throw on the body if need be. Um, my gosh, this mohair fuzz will not quit. So I didn't realize how long my arms are. I like measured them. I finished the sleeve last night and then I just bound off this morning, but I was like measuring as I went and I was like, my arm feels like I kept looking at the sweater sleeve and being like, I feel like I need to stop. I feel like I need to do the cuff. And then I would like measure the sleeve and measure my arm and be like, oh my God, <laughs> I have so much more to go. So I did, uh, one extra decrease repeat than it's called for in the pattern, but the pattern calls for like bracelet length sleeves. So I think, you know, maybe that's just me justifying it and saying I have normal length arms. <laughs> but yeah, oh my gosh. So happy I finished the sleeve. 
and oh my gosh, like putting my hand inside it and stuff, it's like a hug. I'm so excited to get to wear this. And I know I said last time, I'm like, oh, well, with any luck, I'll have it done by Valentine's Day and I can wear it on Valentine's Day. Maybe. The sleeve, um, I was like hard focused on completing the sleeve and I think it took me three, three days of knitting, like two nights and then like one day of focusing on it. Um, so, you know, I could probably finish the other sleeve by next week, just focusing on it a regular amount. Um, and then the body, the body's gonna take me a while. Because the sleeves are nice, the sleeves are garter stitch, real easy, real mindless. The body is in brioche, so it takes forever. Um, so yeah, probably not gonna finish this by Valentine's Day, but I told you guys, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm becoming the pink mohair sweater wearer. I know I said I wasn't, but after this, I can feel it. Every stitch, one step closer. So, lots of progress on that. Super happy. I can't wait to wear it. It's gonna be so warm, and I'm like, you know, we're nearing, nearing the end of winter, I say to myself in my head, but it's New England, so we're gonna have like three different iterations of a winter-spring cycle before it actually becomes spring. So, you know, I'll probably get a chance to wear it before May when it finally starts warming up. So, that's my first whip. My second whip is my my fake muscle burr hat, my muscle faker, as I so lovingly call it. Um, I actually, I don't know how much progress I've made on this. I mean, it's been two weeks, right? So I feel like it's gotta be progress, but I didn't, you know, go back and watch my last podcast to be like, oh, I was here, and I don't have any progress creeper. I don't have any progress keepers, so I just guesstimate, really, where I was last time. I would say I, let me just show it, <laughs> right? I would say I was probably, like, here last time, so I've got, you know, a couple inches, and I've explained this so many times, but this is my improvised muscle bear hat with different increases and decreases, because... I prefer it that way. So, oh my goodness, look at that glare. Those are my crown increases. Um, they're in that like beautiful spiral pattern. That's just my preference. So I'm kind of making it up as I go along, but really loving it, really just excited to have it done. But I'm also, you know, it's like a 50-50 a because like I want to have it done so I can wear it because it's like all of these beautiful neon colors. Uh, this is um, Don't Forget Your Shades by Old Rusted Chair. And I don't know if they still dye this colorway, but check them out anyway because I love all of their yarn. So, Don't Forget Your Shades, super neon, pink and blue and yellow and black and red and gorgeous colors. So yeah, I can't wait to have it done so I can wear it, but I love having it on the needles because it's just easy, mindless knitting. Speaking of super easy, I think the reason why I haven't gotten as much done on that muscle faker hat is because I actually have a pair of half vanilla socks kind of going. Um, I finished one of them. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. I finished one of them, so I'll show you that one, and it has a ribbed leg, so it's a little bit hard to show, so just bear with me. So it's got a vanilla foot, toe up, heel flap and gusset, and then a ribbed leg. Like I said, it's impossible to show a ribbed leg on camera. Let's see. Is that a little bit better? It's not very centered, but you get the gist. So um, this is a commission pair of socks. So the person said that they they wanted a pair of hand knit socks because they don't like the feeling of a seam on like store bought socks. Um, so I'm doing the foot all plain vanilla, but then just doing leg ribbing to make sure that it fits. And they said that they can't handle texture on their foot, but they can handle it on their leg. So I'm trying to do the best of both worlds. The ribbing pattern that's on the leg is from my own design. Um, called A Better Ribbed Sock on Ravelry for free. So, you know, download at your own leisure. Um, 
So yeah, finished one sock. Oh, <laughs> my trademark phrase, I dyed the yarn myself. Uh, she just said she likes really neutral colors, so it looks kind of like blue or almost green on, on the camera, but it's uh, black and gray. <laughs> trying to look at the viewfinder without like looking at the viewfinder you know what I'm trying to say so black and gray like I said toe peel flap and gusset 64 stitches vanilla foot ribbed leg one sock is done I'm trying to arrange my needle so I don't poke my camera but this is the progress that I have on the second sock and I think I am I think I am pretty close to starting the gusset increases just a super neutral black and gray sock. It looks a little bit greenish bluish, but it's black and gray. So that is one of the reasons I have not been working on my muscle faker because this is just, again, a lot of vanilla ribbing, especially on the foot. So, oh, I said vanilla ribbing. I meant vanilla knitting on the foot. The other reason is I have yet another half finished sock. So this is for my next sock design. Um, sorry, my nose ring keeps like sliding into my nose and it's really cold so it's irritating. Um, so my next sock pattern design to be released. Um, I have not released it yet because I am still looking for testers. I know I said this last episode, I was like, oh I'm gonna do a testing call next week. I did a, 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 I did a testing call but I still need testers for the largest size so this I'm all out of sorts but and I know I know my camera I'm so sorry it does not enjoy the color blue this is just a broken rib sock toe up heel flap and gusset I am going to be releasing it in three sizes um, 56 64 and 72 stitches around um, I still need testers for the largest size, which is 72 stitches, so if you are interested, if you are interested in knitting a 72 stitch broken rib sock, you can message me on Instagram or Ravelry. I still need testers, and I was going to release this sometime mid-February, but I don't want to rush people through the tester deadline, so like totally open-ended test request, um, and I'll just release the pattern whenever. I'm not like on a deadline. So these socks, I dyed the yarn myself and these are going to be for my boyfriend. Um, I originally designed the socks like as I was knitting them on a green pair for my sister. I can put that in for you so you guys can see what it looks like. So that was my like design as you go knit knitting on those and then I when I wrote the pattern I used the pattern to knit these socks to see if it made sense. So <laughs> these are for my boyfriend, like I said, toe up, heel flap and gusset, broken rib sock. This yarn looks so cool. It's coming off a little bit extra green on camera. There is definitely green in there. I showed this last time too, but it has, uh, oh goodness, is it better back here? Not really. Um, it has dark blue and light blue and like a turquoise and a green and super pretty. Happy accidents happened in that color. Originally it was supposed to be just like a navy and like a sky blue, but somehow, some way, I think, I mean I know exactly how it happened, but um, I'm gonna feign ignorance on that and pretend that I don't know how it turned green, even though I do, so. We'll just, we'll just not make that mistake again and forget about it. So this is the second sock. I finished obviously one of them. This is the second one. It's coming along so nicely. I am knitting these on a 9 inch circular, which it's my first ever pair of socks knit on a 9 inch circular. I said this last time, but I have a very narrow foot and so my socks are 56 stitches. Um, and it's kind of a struggle to fit 56 stitches on a 9 inch circular needle. It's just a little bit too small. Um, so I've never felt the need to own 9 inch circulars, but now that I am knitting socks for many people with many different foot circumferences, I have them just so I can 
be more prolific. So <laughs> you can see that leg, that's almost done. I'm doing 63 rounds for the leg, which again, happy accident. I was gonna do 60 and then I lost count because I was in a conversation and then when I recounted, I was like, yeah, 63, close enough. So I just made up for it by cutting a couple rounds off the ribbing. It's supposed to be 60-20 and I'm doing 63-18. But that's neither here nor there because, you know, it's kind of unnoticeable and it really, it doesn't matter. <laughs> as long as, you know, the socks stay up and they fit, who really cares how many rounds you're doing. So, long-winded, but the leg is almost done. Oh, they're so pretty. I'm so excited. He, I, I can't remember if he's seen these yet. I know he's seen me work on them, but I don't think he's seen the finished sock yet, so I don't think he's had time to like really get excited about it. It's kind of hard to get excited about a sock when it's on the needle because like as you're knitting it, it's like all crumpled up and like it's not beautiful and you know folded and pretty and in your hands. So I think he's seen me work on them. He knows they are for him, I think. Um, this will be done probably in the next couple days because, like I said, I probably only have 30 rounds total left for that sock. I am checking my notes. My gosh! That's all my whips! Let me check. That's all my whips! That feels really short. <laughs> That's the only things I've been working on. I know uh, I've showed a few more things in previous weeks. Um, they're not here because I have not worked on them at all. My fingerless mittens that I've, that I'm like creating for myself to match the ones I made for my boyfriend, um, I think I've done two rounds on those total in the last two weeks and I'm, st I'm still on the cuff. So it's really, you know, two rounds of ribbing. It's not, it's not going to show up, you know? Um, what else did I, do I usually show? Um, my spinning. I have not done a single minute of spinning since I, you know, finished. I had a hundred gram braid. I spun 50 into a single and I have not touched the other 50 grams at all. I haven't like drafted it. I haven't separated it. It's still in the braid. I've just lost my spinning mojo, I think in favor of my dyeing mojo. I have a buttload of yarn that I've dyed to show you. Um, I usually show you boyfriend knitting as well. I think we're gonna save boyfriend knitting for last because I have a couple stories to go with that. It'll be a little bit more of a like a life update. Um, so let me just get into the yarn that I have to show you. Um, so let me show you, let me show you everything that I have currently in my shop first. Um, just because I think it's more fun for you guys. You'll get to be like, if you see something you like, you can like instantly go there and click on it. So I have two one of a kinds. So. This is the first one. This is orange and yellow. Just dip dyed. Um, I think everything I'm showing right now is on sock yarn. Yes, everything I'm showing is on sock yarn. So this is a 70-30. This is my favorite sock yarn. That's what, uh, whew, let me go through my pile. That's what these socks are knit on, is a 70-30 four-ply sock yarn. Um, it's, it's my favorite. <laughs> That's what this is on orange and yellow, so many beautiful shades. This is gonna knit up so cool. It's gonna be like a, it's gonna be like micro stripes. If you use it for socks, it'll be micro stripes, but it'll have like that gradient transition um, cause it's dip dyed in the same color family. So it'll be like, <laughs> I'm so excited to see it knit up. I can visualize it. It's gonna be so beautiful. I have a very similar skein which is just, ooh, not going to show up well. Maybe back here? Not really, it's really blown out. This is, uh, I'll have to get better pictures or something to put in for you. Um, this is like a, what color is that? It's like the color, there's green in there that's like the color of honeydew melon. It's so, so pretty. This is like a really pastel dip dye. And then there's blue in there that's, almost sky blue, but like if sky blue was a hint more turquoise. I'm trying to like desperately show any sort of color accuracy for you on a, on camera. But oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And um, there's just enough contrast that 
the, the stripes in your socks, if you use it for socks, again, 7034 ply sock yarn, if you use it for socks, the stripes are going to be so subtle, but so beautiful. I like every skein of yarn that I dye, I want to keep for myself. I love them all so much. Next up, we have two skeins of the, that are, I wouldn't say matching, they're sisters, not twins. Um, but it's just like this light turquoise and this like dark, what color is that? Cerulean maybe? Or cobalt? It's, no, it's more green than cobalt, so I'm gonna say cerulean. It is so pretty and it has black speckles. You can see those up top there. So it's got black speckles and the black that I used for these is a non-primary black, so it's just a collection of all different pigments to form black, and so when you speckle with it, it breaks. Oh, please focus on that. So you have this like really pretty like gold and orange that come out, and when I was dyeing this, I was like, this, for some reason, this is gonna sound so random and kind of gross. This reminds me of like, it's, an, it's a very icy blue color. Oh yeah, you can see that like greenish blue down there. It's a very icy blue, and then with the black on there, it reminds me of the snow after the snow plow has like come through and plowed it. So like when it's turning into slush, <laughs> that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> Which is like the most disgusting description of sock yarn, but that's what it reminds me of. Slush. Love those. And again, that's almost in a, a dip dyed fashion, so it'll have little micro stripes in it, which I guess is like my jam, because as you can see, micro stripes, you can't really see that one, but that one's micro stripes as well. I guess that's just my taste. <laughs> Next up, we have, I have to control myself for these guys. This is an 80-20, oh, look at that, oh my god. <laughs> 80 20 two ply sock yarn which is the same as these green ones it's an 80 20 two ply but this ah oh, uh, I want it I would just, I just I don't even want to show you because I want to keep these for myself these are so so beautiful it's like this gold and this orangey red like almost peachy color and then I have black on there but black combined with the gold turned like almost this green color so it's like this this total like autumnal fallen leaves just like almost Halloween but like decaying I don't even know like uh, well they're mine so you can't see them but oh, 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 oh I love these so much so so much and I talked about this on Instagram the other day but these are like total one-of-a-kind like un recreatable because uh, I go through this phase, this technique, this process that I call rage dying and I have the, like I have a vision in my head and then things just don't go according to plan and nothing is coming out right and so I just like stop measuring everything and just like throw dye on yarn just like absolute like I black out and I just like cover the yarn in random dye and this is a result of rage dyeing <laughs> so my boyfriend jokes he's like i need to get you angry more often because oh, look at that that is that is some rage dyeing that is pure rage on this yarn and it just it looks so pretty ah oh, and i just want it i just want to hold it and love it and keep it and you <laughs> you are my squishy and you will be mine but oh, Yes. I think I've talked about those enough. <laughs> Maybe I should have saved those for last because oh my gosh, I, ha I had a real moment with those guys. Next up, I just have this blue tonal. It's got, you know, that same turquoise color and then a much deeper, almost like navy. Yeah, that's a navy for sure. So like a little bit of a turquoise and a navy and this, um, this, surprisingly, will not knit up into micro stripes. This is like a true tonal, so you'll just get like random variation and variegation. Yeah. I don't know why the, the color is a lot truer back here um, than when I bring it close, so forgive me. 
but yes, I love these. Again, these are 70-30 four-ply sock yarn, and I'm sorry about the yarn ties, but if that bothers you, then I really don't know what to tell you because they come on the yarn, and that's how they, that's how it's prevented from being tangled. Okay. <laughs> Last one that's in my shop, and then we'll talk about more yarn. <laughs> so this one, <laughs> look at these guys. They're like freaking neon lemons, dude. So these guys actually came about because I was asking my boyfriend and I was saying, I'm like, I was in the middle of a dye day and I was like, do you have any requests or ideas or just something you want to see on the yarn? He was like, I don't know why, but I really want yellow and black. And so it's absolutely blowing out that camera. Look at that. So we have a like half and half. Um, so one half of the skein is yellow and then the other half of the skein is um, undyed but with black speckles on it. And it's the same black that I was using before. So it breaks and it makes almost like a rainbow. I'm sure my camera's not good enough to for you to see all of the little baby colors in there. But yeah, you almost get a rainbow of speckles and it like turns almost like an orangey color. Um, it turns that base like a more orange color instead of a, you know, un undyed white wool. So I love these. These are going to also, if you use them for socks, they're going to knit up into micro stripes. So it'll be like one stripe of yellow and then one stripe of the black speckles. It's going to be so sick so sick and I actually so I dyed these two and then my boyfriend saw them and he was like oh my god he was like I want those it's like okay so I just dyed up another batch for him so two of these are in my shop and I just dyed two the other day that are going to him so that is everything that is that is everything that is in my shop currently Long story short, I ran out of yellow dye, so I had to place an order. I placed an order with Dharma. I may have gone a little bit crazy overboard, <laughs> spent a little too much money, and bought a buttload of dye. So, of course, what, <laughs> what else am I going to do but do some crazy dye experimentation? So, I have a couple skeins of single ply yarn that I just like swatch crazy on them. I just went swatch crazy. So I'm so excited just looking at them. I, like I said, I went swatch crazy. So I did one skein of warm tones and one skein of cool tones. And let me just hold them up and show you. So this is, this is just a single ply yarn that I had in my stash. It is super wash. So can I just hold them back here? And I'm, I'm saving these. These are for me. Look at these guys. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna um, untwist them, which is a bold decision. I'm gonna untwist them and show you because I need you to see colors because oh my god. I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, let's start. Now my camera does not do well with blue. We already know this. So we'll just start. We have uh, some more turquoise, some navy, some bright blue, some purple, some green, more green. Um, some more purple, I think that might be black on there, some more blues and greens, and maybe some browns, maybe some more purple? I'm, no, I'm lost. Purple? Green? <laughs> purple? <laughs> and we're back to the beginning. So, yeah, look at this. Look at that! Oh, right there, all those greens. I love it so much. So, yeah definitely saving this because like for myself I'm keeping it how could I not and I am planning on making another muscle figure with that it's single ply yarn so it can't go on something that's like hard wearing you know what I mean because it's gonna pill and break and die so I'm gonna make um, a muscle figure for I think the blue one is gonna be for my boyfriend but I'm it might be for me I might accidentally make it too small um, and then I have the warm tone skein. Oh, it's so pretty. This one I twisted up a lot better, but let me untwist it and show you. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we'll start here. We have, oh my gosh, those oranges, some more browns and oranges and purples and pinks. 
some rosy colors. Oh, that pink. Oh, some peachy oranges. Some more like warm toned, like golden browns and reds, purples. I think we might be back to the beginning, but I'm so lost that. Oh yeah, we had some some blue, some blue bleed into there. Because I did them both in the same pan. So we have some green and blue in there. Oh my goodness. Some red, purple, orange. Brown. I, I, I've gone over this before, haven't I? I? Yeah, I'm sure I have. I'm just showing it over and over. That, dude. <laughs> Look at that. So this is going to be a muscle faker for probably me. Uh, I must be in my pink era or something because I'm knitting myself a pink sweater and now I'm like, I'm gonna knit myself a pink or warm toned muscle bra hat. Like, there's gotta be something going on. I'm in, a, I'm in a pink phase of life, I guess. So, we have those two skeins of single ply swatches. I'm sorry, I keep like, I'm just like staring into the viewfinder because. I just, I just love that yarn so much. So like I said, those two are both superwash. Of course I had to try the, the new dye on non-superwash too, because I do dye um, quite a lot of non-superwash yarns. That's just my preference. I prefer non-superwash. So we have two little swatch skeins of non-superwash DK weight. And I'm so torn on these because they came out so beautiful, right? And I'm like, I don't know if I should put these in the shop these two little swatch skeins. I don't know if I should put them in the shop or like selfishly, I want to keep them, right? I want to keep them so bad because I love them so much and they're my babies. Um, but I've already, like I planned out a hat with the single ply, both skeins of the single ply are going to become hats. And so I don't know what I would make with a single skein. This is DK weight. I'm not sure what I would make with a single skein of DK. Um, and I don't want to put them together. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Maybe I, <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> but I love them so much. I love them so much. I cannot, I like, I can't bring myself to list them. <sighs> I love them. Okay, moving on. That was, that's some selfish dyeing, right? I have a yarn mop that's like the prettiest thing on the planet and I, I, I want to keep it. Everything I'm showing you, I, it's like hurting me to, to sell. Like, I, because I just love it so much. So this is a yarn mop. Um, that's what most people call them. I have them listed in my shop under a uh, cauldron cleanup because obviously the Knit Witch dyes her yarn in a cauldron. So, oh, I can't, I can't even, like, there's pink, there's turquoise, there's so many pops of like neon green and yellow in there. And it's, it's a yarn mop, so it has like every color. I just like wipe my utensils on it. I like wipe out containers with it. It's just like, it gets any extra dye. Like if there's, if I'm kettle dyeing and there's extra dye in the water after I've like achieved my desired shade, I just like dunk this bad boy in. I have a couple of them that I like rotate between. Um, but this one just got like, look at like this right here. It got the most beautiful, like, speckling and just depth and it's so gorgeous I mean there's there's gray and there's blue and there's just every color it's so pretty <laughs> I want to keep it so bad because and it's uh like it's super totally utterly one of a kind like no two yarn mops will ever look the same but oh that just like it hurts my heart i'm like how do i pay myself to buy this because i i just want it so bad it's so pretty and i don't even want to knit with it i just want to have it to look at it like i just love it so much <laughs> but that'll have that'll get listed i'm sure and then this is like my first experimental actual colorway that i tied with my new dyes so this is like totally like valentine's day inspired like candy conversation hearts inspired it's super pastel. We have blue. We have like a, a peachy orange that it's this is like all like peachy. It's not really showing up, but we got a peachy orange, like the pastel blue, pastel purples, and like true like rosy pinks and like a really like dusty purple and 
purplish pink how do I even describe it it's like rose but it's also like I don't know it makes me hungry that's ooh, that's really really true to color actually back here it makes me hungry to look at it especially like this this little butt this shade of like purple I, it's like strawberry yogurt Ooh, wow can't believe I pulled that one out yeah it's it's like it makes me salivate like and then these like peachy shades I love it so much I love it so much so let me um, untwist it for you so you can see kind of the color progression so we have like this really tiny section of blue but it transitions into like a purplish pink and the light the light is leaving me but this is a very uh, peachy section right here and then we transition into a more purpley color and then back to the blue but oh, yeah it's good oh gosh it's so pretty I looked in the viewfinder, I think, for 80% of this episode because I've just been distracted by staring at my yarn on camera. It's like, is that like self serving, self centered? What is that word? Self like arrogant to say like how much I love my yarn? But I, uh, I, I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much. I don't want to sell any of it because I love it so much. Like, <laughs> look at that. Oh, look at that. The, the purple and the pink next to each other, and then like the peachy and the blue and the... Oh, I can't, I can't look at it too much because I'll just want to keep it for myself. Okay, that concludes yarn show and tell. I know, I know, I'm sorry. It was about 20 minutes, but I'm sure you guys love yarn, right? You're here, you're watching. You're watching The Knit Witch. I'm sure you guys love yarn. How could you not? So that is yarn show and tell, my whips. Um, boyfriend knitting is the last thing on the docket, and so... My boyfriend has been knitting on this very, very long, beautiful green scarf. Um, I showed it last time. It is ooh, maybe eight feet long at this point. I did not uh, bring it in front of the camera to show you guys because, like I said, it's about eight feet long. Um, it's just like really unwieldy to show, but he's been practicing his purling. I'm not sure if we got there last time. Um, Last time he might have still been on garter stitch, um, but we've practiced purling, so he's done stockinette, he's done ribbing, and um, it's just a two by two ribbing, so he has about like six inches of stockinette and then like six inches of a two by two rib, and now he, he created this idea all by himself, I'm so proud of him, but he was like, I want to do ribbing but like horizontal, and so he, he like... I am so proud of him. He's, he's like I said, natural born knitter. Uh, but he was like, I want to do the ribbing horizontal. And he never like verbalized any of this to me. So he's just been doing rows, like equal sized rows of stockinette and garter stitch. And um, he, so when he gets stuck, he'll like ask me questions and stuff. But we usually just like sit next to each other and knit on our own projects while we watch TV and stuff. But I like looked over and I saw what he was doing and I was like, that looks really cool. And he was like, yeah, I'm trying to do rib but sideways. And I was like, my God, I can't believe you came up with that all by yourself. I'll have to um, take pictures of it and show it to you because I keep saying it. I'm so proud of him. I'm so impressed. He's like I said, a natural. He's like, he's such a problem solver that like when he has an idea, he'll just like do it on the yarn and it'll usually come out good because he can figure it out by himself. It's just, it's really impressive. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to stop um, going on and on about it. But I told him um, probably about a week ago, I was like, I think you're ready to, to move on from the scarf. And he was like, oh, but I love it. It's my little practice thing. I'm like, I know that can be your practice thing, but I think we should. I want to see you do something something else because he's, he's also working with like my scrap yarn from when I was like 10. Um, so it's like a line brand thick and quick or like... I think that is what it is. I think it's Lion Brand Thick and Quick, but it's just like this like sweaty acrylic splitty chartreuse green yarn. And I'm like, <laughs> for my sake, so I don't have to look at that yarn anymore, we're gonna take you yarn shopping. So we had a whole day where we just like went to the big box yarn stores. We went to Michael's and Joann's and I think we went to Walmart too because I wanted to show him the Walmart uh, Peaches and Cream cotton yarn because 
Like I said, he has a Ravelry and he's been like going through and favoriting things that he thinks he can do or things that he wants to eventually accomplish. Um, and dishcloths was like kind of, that's kind of what I moved on to first when I was learning how to knit. I think dishcloths was the one thing where I really like practiced reading a pattern and using purl stitches to create texture and stuff like that. Um, so I showed him the pattern for, I think it's called Grandma's Favorite dishcloth. I'm pretty sure. It's either Granny's favorite or Grandma's favorite. I think it's Grandma's favorite. Um, but I showed him that pattern and I was like, you can totally do this. And he was like, I think I can do that. And I was like, okay, awesome. So we got him some cotton yarn. We, um, when we went, Joanne's was having a big sale. I think it was 25% off all yarn or something. So we got some cotton yarn. He got some neon insanely bright safety orange yarn because he said he wanted to make a hat. And I was like, that's an awesome first project for knitting in the round. Um, I'll teach him how to knit in the round and stuff. Um, so he got some yarn for that. And then Lion Brand has a like 100% USA grown wool that I was completely and totally unaware of until I saw it. And I was like, I like magnetized myself towards the display. And I was like, why do I need every single color that's on this display right now? Um, and it was like, it was on super sale. I think it was usually $16.99 per 100 grams and it was like $8.99 per 100 grams. And I was like, okay, well, pick out any color you like. <laughs> um, bag it up as I'm like shoving yarn in my tote bag. Um, we, we just got two skeins because <laughs> he was like, I don't want to go overboard. Like, what if I don't like it? I'm like, what do you mean? What if you don't like it? What if you don't like knitting? Um, so he was like, I'm gonna go, I don't want to go overboard, I don't, like, he doesn't really have, he just, you know, keeps his yarn at my house, he's like, I don't want to, like, take your yarn space with my yarn, I'm like, dude, I really don't care, like, <laughs> it makes me happy to see you knitting, so, yarn away, dude, like, stash away, like, freaking creep into my room and take up half of my yarn display, do it, do it, I dare you, so, he got some cotton yarn, that neon orange that's gonna become probably a couple hats um, and some lion brand I think it's called local grown or something like that but it's 100% USA wool um, non superwash which is super exciting that's like impossible to find at big box stores except for lion brand fisherman's wool so he got two colors he got a, a blue um, like a navy blue and then like a like a burnt orangey red color um, and he's already like, he's got ambition. Uh, he was like, I want to make a hat that has like little fish skeletons on it. I was like, you've been knitting for less than a month and you want to make a color work hat? I mean, power to you, dude, but that's, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> um, but I am, you know, I love his ambition and we can totally get there because he's such a fast learner. Like, I'm, I'm not doubting him in any way in the slightest. I'm just like, I love that he's, you know, he, you can tell he's a true knitter because he's buying yarn for this project that's probably eight months down the road. <laughs> but it was on sale, so really, can you blame him? I, I really had to hold myself back. I only got, uh, two skeins of Patton's Croy. Um, it was in a, I think it's called Cascade Colors, but it was just this like really pretty, like turquoise and gray marled yarn um, that I hadn't seen before. So of course I got two skeins. So that's gonna be socks in the far future. I got so much sock yarn right now. I like, I'm overrun with socks. I have so much. I have so many things like queued up for my needles. So the Patton's Croy socks are going to be like in the background emergency sock yarn, but I have it just in case. Um, so I think that pretty much concludes today's episode. Um, have I really been talking that long? I think it's been an hour. So we're going to see how far I can cut this down. So thank you everyone so much for watching. Thank you for sticking with me for this long for the egregious yarn segment. Um, please remember that if you would like to test knit a broken rib sock in 72 stitches, you should probably DM me on Instagram or Ravelry. No pressure. 
no like harsh deadline. I just want someone to... <laughs> I've never knit a 72 stitch sock, okay? I'm gonna come right out and say it. So I need you to knit it for me and tell me if the heel fits you right, okay? That's all I need. Please, I'm begging. So that is it and I... Oh, January roundup! Should I do it? I think... <sighs> I have my notebook right here. January roundup. What did I finish? I finished not too many things. I finished my boyfriend's red socks, I finished my sister's green socks, and I finished my boyfriend's fingerless mittens. And I think that's it. Uh, yeah. Very short January roundup. <laughs> so, hopefully that didn't take up too much of your time. I will try to edit this down as much as I can. Um, like I said, thank you so much for sticking with me if you made it to the end greatly appreciate you, and I will see you again very soon on the next episode of the Knit Witch Podcast. Happy making!